It's the final part of the wood base only. Uh, we're going to finish the wood base section, starting with this top bit, right? Extruding that up, that's pretty simple, uh, pretty easy to do, and you could probably guess that was the next step anyway. So uh, yeah, taking this, move it over, taper it off. This is basically tracing, um, but don't let anyone tell you that that's cheating. Uh, because we're going off of blueprints and we're building something to be technically correct. So why, unless you're like learning proportions in drawing, uh, yeah, it's totally fine to trace whilst modeling something like this. Um, anyways, extruding it up and then I'm making a loop cut here because you can see that this kind of curves around. So I'm just adding in detail where it is, uh, where it's needed. Okay, and then this next part, extrude it up again. <laughs> oh, what a surprise. All right, and then one more time, just for good measure, right about uh, here. And there we go. Um, right, now, just like we did before, where we made the lazy man's sharp edge, I'm gonna do the exact same thing because looking at reference, you can see that this just because it's just kind of like with a bandsaw, right? Just like hard shear this uh, this piece essentially. So there's no reason to bother making it closed. I guess you could argue that it might optimize some shaders better. Maybe who cares? I'm gonna delete the faces because it's easier and uh, and and it looks nice. Uh, but you know what? Let me just pretend there's a problem here because this is an opportunity. Because I know some of you come to the comments of YouTube and they say, what happened to my mesh? Look, it doesn't look like yours. And you don't know what you hit or why this happened, um, but something went wrong. So this is a perfect example. So I've just done this deliberately to create this problem. Um, yours will be fine probably. Uh, but if you had a problem like this, the first thing I always do is uh, check whether my normals are facing the correct way. So if you go up to overlays and then click face orientation, this will show you blue is the correct. So there are two sides to a face. Uh, believe it or not, there's two sides and there's a right way to be facing the camera and a wrong way. Red means it is wrong. That's the side that the camera shouldn't be seeing. So uh, this is a very great way to visualize it. I'm glad there is now face orientation. Before that, it was a lot harder to see. But anyways, uh, to clear that, to make sure that it's it basically recalculates it, select everything and then hit Shift N. Um, and there you go. And if for whatever reason, it's still the wrong way, like if you've just accidentally like inverted everything, um, it's control shift N and that will like enable you to flip, flip it manually to the other side, which is how I created this problem for you. But anyways, I wanted to throw that in there because uh, although it's not really part of the tutorial, it's certainly a part of your modeling life. <laughs> um, and actually, in fact, while we're at it, let me create another problem. If you're following along, just ignore this and just watch. But look, here's another problem. How did this happen? So this is a perfect example of when you have two vertices that are sharing the same place, there's something happening and you're not sure what, oh, right. So that's another thing I do. If recalculating the normals didn't solve it, the next thing I do, Alt M with everything selected and then I go by distance and look down there, removed one vertice. And now, ta-da. And sometimes you need to recalculate the normals after that as well. But anyways, uh, what's another way? Uh, oh yeah, okay, let's just imagine that there was like uh, a random edge that shouldn't be there, right? Sometimes if you create an edge, yeah, it, the subsurf modifies like, okay, well this has to be hard, but also smooth and it's doing something horrible. So this is another very common, uh, very common play, uh, problem. So I just select the edge in edge select mode and then I click, uh, X, and instead of like deleting the eggs, as egg, eh, deleting the edges, which would probably work, uh, dissolve it. No, <laughs> all right, forget that. <laughs> I thought dissolve edges, normally dissolve edges if you've got a loop cut in the wrong place. It, anyways, we're gonna just delete the edge straight um, and then it's fixed it. So those are three very common ways to fix something. Recalculate normals, uh, Alt M, uh, merge by distance, make sure there's no vertices on top of each other. And then the third one is check that there are no um, edges or by the way, uh, faces for that matter. Um, I've seen this one a lot and you'll probably see this as well, right? If you have something like this, 
you'll have the exact same problem, right? You've got a face inside that doesn't need to be there. And that's really, really common. Um, so that's a very, very, uh, <laughs> very, very common problem. So these are kind of problems that, you know, the subsurf modifier highlights. You don't want them in any mesh, um, but the subsurf modifier makes it very clear that there is a glaring problem going on. It'd be great if there was some sort of like algorithm or a tool or a plugin or something that like analyzed your mesh and would like look at stuff that's going wrong and go like, hey, two vertices on top of each other, they should be cleared. That'd be good, I think. Uh, anyways, there's an opportunity there for someone who always wants to make an add-on. All right, um, so we're coming to the end here. Um, Let's proceed. We, uh, this edge here is obviously, it's got the problem with our Play-Doh-y thing that we solved in part two. Um, and that is of course, because it's averaging from there to there to there. So you might be wondering like, okay, well we, we would create like a loop cut, right? Well then you'd have to create like a loop cut going here, right? And then another loop cut like going here and then clear like do that snap step there and then snap step there. There is another way and it is far, far, far easier. And that is to simply select the edge, holding down Alt, click and just do it manually. And then we're gonna hit Control B, which is a bevel operation. And look at that. It is identical almost to a, uh, to a loop cut. Um, they function very similarly at a sort of a base level. It's like it's adding a loop cut, but you're deciding where it goes. It's not, doesn't have to follow one face. The bevel kind of, you could put it anywhere. Um, one thing to note, which is why I haven't applied this yet, is that sometimes you'll find the bevel moves in mysterious ways. It uh, like some part will be like skewed out and it'll be at a wrong scale. So to cancel that, if you go into object mode, this is something you have to do before you do a bevel operation because it evidently <laughs> your scale here, it's always never one. Like if somehow you always end up doing something and you've, you've got the wrong scale. Basically there's a lot of things in Blender um, that rely on the scale value here, like a displacement modifier, a bevel modifier, a solidify modifier. They'll all be based off of the scale amount here. And if they are not set to one, they will not be performing as accurately as they should. Same thing with UV unwrapping. Basically scale should always be set to one. You might be wondering, well, why don't, doesn't it always just set to one? Well, because then it would create problems on the fly and you wouldn't know why it was happening. Whereas at least here you can clearly see what the problem is and rectify it in a step that you can identify. Anyways, to clear this, we hit control A, this is in object mode and we apply the scale. Once we've done that, one, 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 we now know that when we perform our bevel operation here, control B, that it's actually moving correctly. You might not see much of a difference there um, because they were almost relative, like close to each other, but one of them was a little bit out. So it wasn't exact as it should be. Anyways, so how big do I want my bevel? How big do I want my, yeah, my, my essentially like that loop cut thing. Um, that looks pretty good. Now, one thing is, is it has created a little problem up here, which is easily solved uh, by simply taking this vertice and then merging it with this vertice. Now you could do this two ways. I'll show them both to you because why not learn some little modeling tips and tricks? So uh, the first is to uh, select this vertice first, then this vertice last, last, and then hit Alt M. And then if you select merge at last, or depending on the order you selected them at first, uh, it will then merge that guy into that one right there. And just to undo that, to show you a completely different way, this is a really easy way to like quickly merge vertices um, without having to worry about stuff. Like, so you'll know that if you're moving something, if you hold down control, um, you can see it moves it at increments, right? So it's generally used for like object mode, like you can, it'll like snap to the grid floor. Well. This like holding down control, it's like the snap mode. And you don't just have to snap it to increments, you can also snap it to any of these. So a very common one is to snap to vertex, which means that with this selected, if I move it and then holding down control, if I move it near that guy and I release it, because I have auto merge turned on, it's now automatically merged it. So it's a really like super easy way to like quickly merge parts of the mesh in like one step. Um, it's, it's really, really handy. Um, this auto merge thing up there, it's, it's really great. You can really model very quickly there. And uh, I'll just check that there isn't an extra edge there than there should be. Okay, cool. 
I wasn't sure because it was like there was there was an edge to there to there to there and then it's like if you merged it would there be two edges I don't know but it seems like Blender is smart enough to realize that shouldn't be a thing <laughs> Anyways, cool. So one other thing that the bevel does a little bit differently to the loop cut, loop cut is that it has not lined them all up because it's beveling it. So it's put it at a, you know, 45 degree angle, like going this way, right? Um, so essentially looking from top view, if I go into wireframe mode, you'll see that everything else is aligned along this, like this face here, except for that little bevel operation there. So if I just select everything, including that bevel there and then hit S, X, so the X axis, you can see that little red line there, and then zero, it's now clearing it on, uh, it's basically, yeah, making everything aligned perfectly. It's a very common operation to uh, S and then choose an axis, Y, Z, whatever, then zero, and it'll perfectly align things uh, in one smooth step. Um, now at the top here, you might know that uh, we've got kind of like a little bit of a lip and it's going to be hidden by this uh, backing of the chair there anyway. But, uh, you know, might as well just align it to be this, this sheared diagonal edge there. So I'm just going to select that part there and then just move it up along the X axis, G, Z, or just middle mouse to lock it to the axis. And uh, there we go. Cool. So um, we're coming to the end. There's one area which is still Play-Doh-y and that is this back part of the leg. So of course we need a loop cut there. So control R, vertical, and then click and drag it somewhere close. Now at the top here, ha 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 ha, look, we have a problem. So this, uh, you know, in the order that we did this, we created this and then we got this bit at the top and now we've added a loop cut. And now this is the case where when you, you know, when you're modeling something like this, typically this is really common. You you end up doing something and then later on you have to delete part of that because it's just easier to correct it by deleting it. So what I've done here, whoops, hang on, is I've got this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select these three vertices here and I'm gonna curl them around so that it follows that edge all the way around it, just like what we did uh, over here with that, with that curve there. So rather than extruding, I'm going to hold down control and then right click once here and then once here. And you will notice that magically we have created an opportunity for four faces, which is like when all the stars align and you're like connecting vertices to try and like make it work. And then you get an area where it's just perfectly four vertices and you're like, oh, it's a face. Ooh, because <laughs> of course you don't want an end gone. You don't want to try. It has to preferably be four, four faces. So uh, anyways, look at that. It's now following it around. You can see in face select mode, holding down alt. You can follow that all the way down to the base and uh, it's flowing the way that it should. Um, cool, so now we can enter into cleanup mode and essentially just improve anything that could be more improved. <laughs> so uh, for example, this curve here, in uh, in subsurf mode, you can see that it's not quite there, right? It's uh, in fact it's pretty far off from the mark. So what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, might as well switch on subsurf mode while I'm in edit mode because I want to get this line to uh, to align so it helps to see it. So I'm going to add a loop cut right here. So right in the middle there, just click and then a right click to cancel it. So it puts it right in the middle there, and then I'm just going to drag that across like so. And you can see that it's now much much closer. To, uh, to the reference, sorry, the, the blueprint, I guess. And then another loop cut right here. Grab that and then move that up along the Z axis to there. And then might as well also, this is a little off the mark as well. Uh, so something like that. And you can see that that is now obviously a much, much closer match to the reference. Um, I guess it's a little tight there. Is it a little tight there? Hmm. No, I mean, there's, there shouldn't be a reason it's any tight there. But uh, eh, anyways, let me just check. Shift N, clear any normals. There's no, uh, any vertices on top of other vertices? There's not. Yeah, I mean, it's sometimes, it's just the way it is. <laughs> and it's not worth fixing. Um, okay, so there's that, that curve right there. And then there's another curve over here. And I'm including that in the tutorial, by the way backtracking on what I just said um, <laughs> to show that, you know, sometimes you find a problem and it's just not worth fixing um, because yeah, who cares? And sometimes if you're not done mo with the model yet anyway, it might end up rectifying itself. So uh, anyways, um, yeah, I'm adding, I'm making sure that each one of these curves will have uh, five cuts going along it. So I'm adding another cut right here, 
right click, move it up, just making that nice and round. Um, yeah, it's got that same hard little edge there, which I guess is probably caused by uh, this, like maybe rotate it, move it up slightly so that it curves around a little bit better. Nope, it's even worse. <laughs> I guess actually maybe we should add a loop cut here because technically it's got, it's averaging from there to there to there, right? Those three vertices, which is a really, it's a long way for it to, to average. So uh, if we add a loop cut right here, move that up to there, then we see that. Uh, so there we go. That's how to solve that problem. <laughs> it's just to add another loop cut underneath it. There we go. Hey, hey, hey. See, I'm, I'm learning as I go on the 10th or 11th time I make this chair. I'm like, oh yeah, you should, you should put a loop cut there. Uh, but anyways, cool. All right, so that's good. Oh yes, up here as well. We've, uh, we've added a loop cut there, so we might as well use it. Give it a little bit of definition to that curve. This could be moved further out. Uh, this probably needs a loop cut right in the middle here, just so that we've got a little bit that's uh, dipping down. And then this area here, probably pull it across to, to there. And look at that. That is pretty good. Now the final thing that you'll want to do is to check that your bevel all the way around it. So this, this area here, um, that the angle or like the, where the bevel starts and where the bevel stops on both sides of that 90 degree angle, um, it's correct. And like, you know, you don't have to care about it. Like if it looks fine to you and you're fine with the edge, fine and dandy, right? But in my case, I think that this bevel is a little, uh, it's a little hard. And the other thing to note also, which is probably more pressing is that, uh, you know, using understanding subsurf modifiers, it's averaging out those three vertices, which means that technically this line here, if we look uh, at this, draw it on the surface, it's kind of going like this all the way out and then it's stopping here, which means from there to there, it's kind of got this like raised bit when really this whole thing here should be flat according to the reference. So anyways, point is, uh, we can improve this ever so slightly with just one more loop cut going down here and then just moving it eh, sort of about there. And that way this this whole area here is uh, actually going to seriously be uh, flat. Not just that area, but the, <laughs> the whole bit. Uh, yeah, pretty good, cool, good enough. And then uh, we'll do it, same thing across all of it. One there, and then I'll do the same. Oh, it's already gone all the way over around there. Uh, all right, because it's all connected. It's one piece. Good. Awesome. Um, now, the other thing is, is yeah, the bevel, right? Checking that bevel all the way around. Like, I think this bevel, like, it looks a little bit sharper than our reference, whereby the bevel is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit rounder. So because we've, we've done the correct thing and we've modeled it so that the curves, are, uh, it's following around. If I double tap G, we're now moving the entire thing and we're sliding it out. So we have control, this area too, control how big that bevel actually looks. And uh, it probably doesn't look as perfectly, you know, like a nice smooth, uh, what's that word they use in woodworking? It's not like a miter edge. It's a, I don't know, maybe it is a miter edge. There's a word for it, but you know, like a perfect, perfectly beveled area, but it's pretty close and uh, I think it's pretty good. Cool, so well done guys, we've done the wood base. One final thing though is bringing back our blueprint from the front, we can now finally, now that we are happy with how everything looks, we're not gonna be fiddling around with vertices hopefully in the future, which means that uh, we can rotate our mesh in front view so that it matches uh, the reference there. And in fact, I think it's, uh, it should be slightly, ever so slightly thicker. So before I rotate it, cause it's just gonna be easier if I do this beforehand, I'm just gonna make it just a little bit thicker and then rotate it. Oh, it's still a little bit thicker again, rotate it again. Mm, one more, a little bit thicker again. <laughs> and that's pretty good, cool. And then of course, making sure that you clear your rotation. Uh, sorry, not rotation, no, clear the scale. I actually wanna keep my rotation like this because here's a little trick. Once something is rotated like this, if you wanted to say, like move this along, like this, like move it down, but along this, this face here, and you couldn't uh, loop slide, for example, edge slide. Um, if you changed the uh, transform orientation to be local instead, what this means is that now if you hit G and Z, it's gonna move it along 
whatever this is set to in terms of its uh, rotation. So your Z now is actually at the same angle as the chair leg there. So there are some cases where actually having the rotation not exactly the way it should be, it can be uh, a little bit better. But uh, anyways, there we go. Well done. Oh, sorry, one final thing as well is uh, the scale of our, uh, yeah, basically looking at it side view to the blueprint. Um, it's not quite as tall as it was. So I'm just gonna hit S and then Z, and then that's just gonna scale it up ever so slightly um, until it matches. And there's, you know, it's not perfect, but there's, it's close enough and that's gonna do it. So then I'm gonna hit Control A and apply the scale so that we don't have any more problems in the future. Well done guys. It was a, uh, wow, almost 40, 40 something minutes to make this wood base, but hopefully you're not here just to learn uh, how to uh, how to make a chair, but you're here to learn some modeling skills. Um, if you are here just to learn how to make a chair, you are furious right now at how long this tutorial is. But thank you for watching. Uh, go ahead and join me in the next part as we will be completing the rest of the chair, making the back, making the, the this base here, or getting into like curved surfaces and how to keep things curved and still work with it. So go ahead, join me in the next part.